Hi, this is Cascade, and this is a guide for the reverse Archon Typhon build. A build that during a window of 4 seconds, even on a GR 150, can completely destroy a pool, even without any help from power or the red circles. This is season 8, 28 though, and we will tap from our portion. Sometimes we get the damage circle, and in that case, you see what happens with the Rift Guardian here. In one cycle, we take about two thirds of a GR150 Rift Guardian. If you're lucky enough to get power, either from a portion or from a pylon, then you're strong enough to completely clear the screen in a matter of four seconds. This is a really powerful for build and I would like to show you all how to play it. Let's get started. So let's go and have a look at the leaderboard first and see what others have been playing and you'll find that almost everyone are playing with, with a very similar build. I will take my favorite clear I think. This is a 2200 Paragon player. It's quite low compared to most others. So there are 4000, 5000, 3000 this is the lowest poison margin, and it's still, still a really good time. You'll find similar builds on, on uh, all of the other clears as well, except except this one. So, uh, you have six-piece Typhon, of course, Serpent Sparker and Fragment of Destiny. Equip the best one, put the second best in the, in the cube. This one is really difficult to roll well. Ideally, you want crit chance. Area damage and hydro damage on this one, and it's it's very difficult to find one with with all three even non ancient. So it's just just do the best you can with this one. Hello, Kavini for storm armor as usual. Let's have a close look at the orange roll. Seventy eight already is meaning that you take ten percent more damage compared to eighty. Percent roll, so every every percent you go below 80 is, means extra damage taken. This is a nice roll, though, and Ancient is particularly good when you're not super high Paragon, and the Intelligence roll will, will help you as, quite a bit as well. Usual Convention of Element. It's not really a burst build by nature, but um, you can play around the Convention of Element, right? You can try to move between packs, between your cold cycles. This is, this is a nice roll as well, it's lacking um, area damage or attack speed, but it's nice. And Guardian is super good, especially at lower Paragon, right? It's very strong, while at high Paragon, this one is losing value a bit. Usual Squirts, Tasquin Tio and Magistrate. You equip the best roll you have, you put other one in the cube. It's quite difficult to roll a good Tascrant TO, so in 9 cases out of 10, you will want to equip Magistrate and put Tascrant TO in the cube as well. In particular, it's important that you have a max roll orange here, so the attack speed of 50, as you see, and it's got a trifecta with attack speed, crit chance, and uh, area damage. So this is, uh, this is uh, a nice roll. Otherwise, you would wear Typhoon gloves here. Maybe you didn't find good Typhoon gloves. Or not a good. Magistrate skills are standard. It's the, um, the Hydra that you need to deal damage. Special Blades is giving you shield sustain and it's proccing fragment. Storm Armor is proccing Karini. Blizzard is proccing Winter Flurry. And then there are two slots that are somewhat, somewhat free. They are not mandatory. And usually this is teleport. But um, this season we have CC immunity and we have passability as well, meaning we can walk through people. So we don't get pulled in to the big packs of mobs. And if we are in the middle, we can still just walk straight through them. And especially with extra movement speed as well, teleport is, is not that important any longer. And many choose to pick the magic weapon. It gives you a little bit of extra damage and deflection as well. It gives you more shield sustain together with barrier blades. And black hole absolute zero is quite a big damage buff because it's adding more call damage to more enemies you hit. Passives are fairly standard as well. This is a big shield, 
that you try to protect with your sustain shield. So if you if you don't go through your sustain shield for five seconds, this one resets and gives you a big shield. Audacity, it's a big damage boost. Try to stand close to, to monsters when you damage them. Or can Dynamo is another huge damage boost as well. You need to swipe five times to get your stacks before you place it down. And then Elemental Exposure is adding in more damage again because you're actually proccing most of the elements in um, most of the time. For gems, you want Enforcer, being up to Trapped, and being up to Stricken. It's not really a lot of alternatives here. If you're playing a little bit lower and you can kill the Rift Guardian, you can swap out Stricken for um, something else instead. But swapping into Sace with Audacity is a bit difficult, and it's a bit more difficult to play this, this build range, although you can. And swapping into Powerful just isn't a lot of extra damage. So. And with the extra attack speed as well from Fragment of Destiny, you you get quite a lot of stricken stacks quite quickly, so Pain of Stricken is getting a lot of value. You can even get a few stacks in on Elites when you're playing. So, so, so Stricken is, is a quite, quite good option here, and there are no really strong alternatives to it. Let's have a look at the concept for Reverse Archon now. So if we go back and look at all the damage multipliers of Hydra, this is just a general damage multiplier. It's always up. We don't need to do anything. Convention of element is short damage burst during just a few seconds, but we don't need to do anything. We just need to keep an eye on the, on the timer down here. Magistrate is just general multiplier. Squirt's just general multiplier. Halo of Karini requires Storm Armor to be up, but this one is going without us pressing anything. We just press, press it once at the start. This one, we do need to do something about because this is only Hydras in Blizzard, so that means that we need to cast Blizzard on top of people to take more damage. And this is going for 6 seconds, so this means that this is a damage buff that only lasts for 6 seconds after we, after we, we play pressed Blizzard. Similarly, Fragment, Fragment of Destiny it's only after we've swiped something, you need to hit something as well. It doesn't say here, but this buff is up for 5 seconds. So we only have our full damage buffs within 6 seconds of a blizzard and within 5 seconds of Fragment of Destiny. So with that in mind, we have a look at this skill here, the Archon. And this is a lot of damage buffs, it's just a straight up 30. But then there's another 6% extra damage for each enemy you kill while in Archon. And we're going to use uh, these two items as well that help us. So this, this, this belt here is giving us extra stacks. This is reaching from 40 to 50. You really want a 50 roll, 2% um, damage short here with the 49 roll. So this means that uh, apart from the from the 30, we also get 6 times 49, 6 times 50, so an extra 300% damage. So this is a huge damage multiplier only by pressing Archon and by pressing the um, and with, with this belt here. And then you want to line this up with Convention of Element as well. And the Convention of Element is lasting for 4 seconds. Each cycle is 4 seconds. This buff is 6 seconds, and this buff is 5 seconds. So I think you see where this is going. So in the last second, in the last... So so what, what you want to do here is just at the start of cold, just the instant it swaps over into cold, you want to press Archon, so that you are in Archon mode and you get the, all the damage buffs during the cold cycle. But you also want this buff here, so you need to cast uh, Blizzard on top of the people you're going to hit in the last two seconds before cold, so that it's lasting throughout the entire cold cycle. Um, for this one here, you need to swipe an enemy the last one second be um, 
been this is the, the one second at the end of arcane so you see here this is the arcane cycle so now we need to cast meteor or uh, i've played so much talrosha you, you need to press lizard in the last two seconds and then in the last one second you need to swipe and then you press archon so it's blizzard swipe archon and then you get all these archon buffs together with all the usual buffs that you have here to make this even better we play with the swami so archon lasts for 20 seconds and after we're out of archon we got 12 seconds before the next cold cycle so this is a 32 second cycle we will get another cold cycle at the very end of archon but that cycle will be without fragment of destiny and without winter flare so it's not going to deal a lot of damage we do however keep the stacks so it will be the 49 or 50 stacks we get here plus whatever we, we, we kill it can range from just a few enemies or if it's a good trash pull that you have you can get 50 or more kills so that will give you up to hundreds of stacks, which will make, give you 600% extra damage. And with this one, we, we get to hold on to this until the next cycle. <coughs> so this is another 20 seconds after the end of Archon. So that's a total of 40 seconds. So that means that we have 12, 12 seconds between the end of Archon to refresh our Hydras, make an Apoil, get uh, and, and get our new buffs up again and then for next cycle we go again and we not only get the new fifth stacks here but we also get the old ones from the previous cycle which can be anything between 50 up to into the hundreds so that means that in practice we are going to have a total of maybe 150 stacks when we deal damage 150 times six which is close to a thousand percent extra damage and together with the 30 percent base damage this Archon is more than a 10 times damage multiplier it's really strong so why why is this build particularly strong this season this is in 28 and there are three main reasons that makes reverse Archon a particularly good fit and one of them i already touched on that um, it's a no teleport build we don't have space for teleport we need deflection because we don't have any sustained shields from special blades while in archon so it's 20 seconds when we are not swiping so it means that if we want sustain in archon we need to have magic weapon and then we switch out to black hole for archon which means that there's there's no space here for teleport and already said that with with the cc immunity and possibility that's that's not such a big deal the second reason is that it's very important to throw the abilities just right in the last few seconds before Archon. You need to get it exactly right when the question of element circuit starts. If you get CC'd, if you get like frozen or vortexed or anything in the last few seconds before your damage cycle, the, you, you lose 32 seconds of turret. You lose more more than 32 seconds actually because if you don't press Archon in time, then your cooldown won't be up for the next cycle 32 seconds later. And if you miss one cycle, you're kind of missing the next cycle as well because you don't get the carryover stacks with the Swami. So you kind of lose more to a full minute actually if you just get CC'd a few seconds at the wrong time. So the CC immunity allows you to hit the things in the last few seconds every time as long as the, you don't get distracted by other thing and you actually press press the buttons it's going to go through every single time you're not going to lose some cycles to cc and the third reason is that we need to reset archon every 32 seconds we need to have a huge cooldown and off season we need a 68 percent cooldown reduction and it's doable but you need all of the cooldown rolls you need a diamond you need cooldown shoulders gloves rings you need it on a weapon, you need it on a offhand. You don't need it on the amulet, that's the one role you cannot have it on. You need evocation, you need paragon points, you need your enchantress. And then you, you just barely get the cooldown down to 32. But rolling cooldown on all of your items here is giving up a fair bit of, of damage. 
And this season with the um, Gloves of Worship, and when we rescue, we have a 1 in 6 chance to get the Empowered, that's giving us 50% cooldown reduction. We don't need to get this incredibly high 68% cooldown reduction any longer. We only need to get a 36% cooldown reduction, and for that it's enough. With a single cooldown roll on shoulders, and then we swap out Elemental Exposure for Evocation, and we're set. So that's, that's a huge buff as well compared to what you have to do off-season. Alright, we are ready to start talking about how we play this build. And you open a GR 150, you go in, and then you leave the rift and you close it. Because we're looking for a big open map with high density, because we're going to make big pulls with lots of enemies, preferably multiple elites in a single pull. And we won't be able to do that on a closed map. Or a small map like this. Ideally we get a good mob type as, as well, but main priority is to make as big pulls as possible. So when you're actually pushing you're going to need a few keys and there'll be a fair bit of going in and out like this. I think for my clear I spent 70-80 keys or something like that before I got to clear. After a bit of opening and closing you're eventually going to actually get a good rift. And before we start here, I should note that this is not the clear on the leaderboard. I was just showing a bit of gameplay afterwards. So I think this ended up being an 11 minute clear, while the leaderboard one is just above 9 minutes. So when you open the rift, the first thing you do is to place down your, your buffs. You place your hydras, your storm armor, magic weapon. And after that, you wait for arcane cycle, and then at the start of the arcane cycle, you press Q. It's happening now. It's ready to actually press Q here. So you see, um, we want to press uh, press Q around one second into arcane cycle because you may, may spawn a damage ring as we did this time, and they last for seven seconds. So if you spawn it one second into arcane, it's going to last throughout the damage cycle. You can go a bit later as well, but this is just to give, give you as much time as possible to adapt and get into the ring. At the start though, we don't press Archon unless we get uh, empowered, because if I press it now, Archon is going to go on a one minute cooldown, and if I do get empowered in 30 seconds, Archon won't be on cooldown to actually do it again. That's fine. Instead, we wait and we spend the time in the meanwhile to try to make a giant pull on the open map, right? So when we do get uh, empowered, hopefully, we we have a big pull that we can kill. And the idea here is that if it takes too long before we get it, we just leave the rift. So that's what makes this even even fisher. We not only need to find a good rift, we also need to find. Uh, we need to be, be lucky with, uh, with, with the potions. So here, 30 seconds later, we press Q again. We got power, and I just said why we shouldn't press Archon before we get empowered, but this is a 3.5 times damage multiplier, and it's just too much to give up. So we, we, we just screw up our cooldown just so we can get the uh, damage cycle here. And it's, it's okay, we get decent damage in. I think I wasn't really ready. I think it was a bit late into this circle. It wasn't executed well with the pull. So I got, I still got the bit in. You see there are 99 stacks here, so I still killed like 50 enemies or something. But we mostly like trash and eels and things. So now we wait and we are soon up to next portion cooldown. Pressed again. And we got the... The defense one, what it's called? I don't, I don't know what it's called. The little shield on the left, I think it gives 25% damage reduction, which is good, but it's not what we need. So spend another 30 seconds just pulling more things in anyway. So I'm going forward a bit. And uh, yeah, so this is next cycle here. We pressed again. We didn't get Archon. 
so you see it's gone it's been quite a quite a bit of time in this rift now and if i would have been playing this for pushing to 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 beat nine minutes i probably would leave at this point but i was playing for like just to make some content educational content so i just just kept going and hoped for a better life next time so we yep. hope Back to next, so just keep pulling, keep pulling, and Russian cooldown coming up again soon. And I think this time, yeah, you see a mouse over. Yeah, it's, it's a mess, but I, we, we got it this time. So now we can actually press the button. But then um, we can even kill a bit of enemies here. But then. 32 seconds that we get uh, the full power of Harkon, right, with the overlapping stacks. Because since we haven't been pressing Harkon, we, we don't get the overlapping stacks. So we just get a little bit more mobs in, and now I'll go slowly through the 12 seconds before the next proper cycle. You see the 81 buff, the Harkon is just about to run out. And the first thing you do is that you place two Hydras down, just to make sure that you get 100% uptime on Hydras for your defense buff for Typhon. Uh, because the cycle is 32 seconds, right? Well, the Hydras stay up 30 seconds. So if you don't do this, you're going to have a bit of downtime where you're super squishy. So let's not do that. So just immediately place down two Hydras. And after that, we start swiping to get five Arcan Dynamo stacks. That's the purple little helm in the middle with a five next to it, which means that we get an Arcan Dynamo Hydra that we place down here. We try to place it a bit outside of the pole so it can shoot in towards the pole and hit as many enemies as, as possible. You don't want to put Hydras in the middle because then they're going to shoot out from the middle and you're just going to hit like a small slice of the pole. We are one second into Lightning, so we swipe five more times to put second Hydra up with Arcan Dynamo. So that's the second one here and I think that was a better placement. Here, right, you see how when it's shooting into the pole, it's going to hit most of the enemies. They got quite a large range, actually, so you probably won't hit the furthest one, but it's definitely going to hit the, the yellow in the middle. And then you see we are almost at uh, two and a half seconds left, so we need to press Q. We need to press Blizzard over everything, and then we need to keep swiping. And then we press Archon just when it slips into cold. So it was a bit late Q here, and I think we refreshed the XP bonus or something like that. You see the Blizzard coming down as well, and you see the 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 ten the um, on the buff bar. That's fragment of destiny, and that's refreshed just now with one second left. So that one should be fine throughout the cold cycle as well. So now we just wait, and then just at as called. As, as cold starts, we, we press Archon. And we didn't get a damage circle, you see a damage circle. You see the, the green circle there that's giving um, resource cost reduction, I think. So we go back, we, we, we go down to the yellow Oculus ring instead. It's giving it 85% damage bonus, which is almost as much as the 100% damage circle. And then we see the the clip at the start of the video here when we kill the yellow and a lot of uh, a lot of trash as well and it's a big big jump in the in the progress and that's how the cycle works and then we just find a new group find find a new pole and keep running and stay deal I'll stay in this rift and that's just continue commentating what what happened uh, although I won't go into details on, on on the cycle and things, I just go to our play the, play the rift instead. So we, we find a champion pack here and a conduit pylon, which which is always nice. We've only found two elite packs so far, so the bottom half is probably packed full of elites. So maybe a better play here, or probably a better play would have been to leave the conduit for now, go down and find elites and try to, to pull them up towards the, the Condi, or at least the ones that are close. Instead I just took it straight away, because I think I felt a bit impatient and I saw my progress bar being behind and I just wanted to catch up and I didn't... Like, uh, I think I knew I wouldn't, this wouldn't be a PB anyway. You see there's another elite, they're just like one screen 
below the condi, I definitely should have gone picked that one up so I could have sapped it together with the other two. So that's, that's certainly a misplay and could could be could be more really it's further down as well. Because now we have to like I don't even finish this one with the condi right, but luckily we're playing reverse archons so we can kill things without it. You see here with Condi like my deal and damage out of cycle so I had to start Archon just while while running because I didn't have time to make a pull. But now I'm trying to make like go back to normal reverse Archon play again when the when the is over. You see the Archon bar Archon bar is ending now, so I have some kind of I think there is a champion pack in here. Let's place the Hydra's decent placement. Uh, good Oculus Ring, let's see, yeah, and Diamond Ring, but in this case it's better to stay in the, could have been better to stay in the <laughs> Oculus Ring for the, uh, Audacity, right? You get a, you get a damage bonus when you stay close by. But I think maybe the Oculus Ring was despawning in the middle of the, uh, of the cold cycle anyway, it's better to go to the damage cycle, I guess, stay through, through the cold. Yeah, I found another elite there, so lots of elites. I don't think I killed the blues, the blues are still down there. Got almost overlapping rings. Uh, yeah, maybe if I stand in the middle, I can have one foot in each ring and I get that much double cycle. I got power as well. I would have one cycled the. Uh, it's like I got the power pylon from the, from the potion. And if I had just like pulled better, made sure that the yellow actually was inside the pool. I would have one cycle the, the yellow, but I screwed it up. I was a bit impatient with uh, getting like to group the yellow up with the, with the trash pole with the zombies. Then I wasted instead. Oh, we got overlapping rings again for the cycle, and almost killed it oh, out of cold. Oh no! See, barb come and execute that thing. Yeah, and now we, yeah. Uh, I really want to, to kill it, but yeah, there, there's no damage between, <laughs> between the cycles. And I think, did I, did I kill the blues? I think I killed the blues. We still have blue left still. Uh, anyway, so now, like, should I go or should I leave? No, there's a blue as well. Yeah, I should, I should definitely stay and finish this two up. Yeah, I haven't finished them before Archon goes online. Yeah, so now I just, like, press Archon in the middle of nowhere because... Like, once once you get out of Archon, you get your, your, your buffs up. So then... Uh, so you deal a bit of damage in the no Archon cycle as well. So here we get the power pylon, this is nice. And uh, and yeah, it's good mob type. Again, press it straight away. I press a bit in time, and one second, and there we go, and there's... Um, I think we get a one cycle on this one. Yeah, yeah. so that's what would have happened with, uh, with that... Um, um, what are you called? The Bogans. The Bogan yellow on the first floor. I had power as well there, right? But since I screwed it up, I did one cycle it and ended up taking three cycles to kill it instead. So if I played that better, I would have like been like two cycles ahead here. And this is the second power cycle, and I think this one was in the clip as well. It's just clearing up the blues and all the grotesques. So you got lots of progression. Yeah, so you get you get two when you get a power pylon, you get um, you get two or two damage cycles. So just make sure not to. You don't want to click portion after you took the power on the first cycle. But then you're cancelling the second one, right? You can, you should press portion for the second power cycle because you might get a ring, and even if you get power from the potion and you're like the 30 seconds at the left of the pylon turn into 16 seconds left of the uh, of the potion doesn't matter because you're, you're not going to get a third cycle from the pylon anyway so pay attention on the first cycle but do press the, the potion for the for the second second cycle of the power Good circle. Yellow is far away though. Can we one cycle the blues? No, no way. No, not even close. Didn't have power. There is one almost at full health. It's down here. Oh, Parland. Our speed is nice. Yeah, especially since we got the Rift Guardian, right? So it'll help us stack, stack stricken. 
It's, uh, it's good trash. It's, yeah, it's not very extreme, right? But yeah, we had really good, uh, really good trash types three times in a row. Alright, we're going again. Clear of trash. We didn't get a good hit on the yellow. The, um, and I was like, 95, should I finish off the yellow or get 5% of trash instead? Uh, so I think I decided for the yellow, so I'm going after it. It's tech stricken now. So, teleporters, I'm worried that it's going to teleport out just for the damage circle. So, I'm a bit like, oh, there, we, oh, there was the teleport. It means that the teleport is on cooldown and it's going to stay there for the damage circle, so I think we're fine. Yeah, I mean, we got to overlap in circles here, so I was an easy kill. And this part is, is in the clip as well. So, I have a speed pylon here, right? So, I'm getting a bit of stricken. Next stack for for the first damage cycle. So if you if you don't get any procs at all from the potions, it usually takes three cycles to kill it. Well, if you get the power, you can you can one cycle it. The, this one is uh, times two damage buff rates plus hundred percent, and it's doing two thirds in one cycle. Well, if I get the power potion here, it's a 3.5 damage circle, it's almost double damage, so we would easily one cycle this one with, uh, with the power pull here. But uh, yeah, I think we managed to, to cycle it instead here. Yeah, I think I'll, yeah, I got more stricken stacks now, so unless I screw, I screw it up entirely. It's not the ring, but who cares. Yeah, there we go. It's fine, yeah, I was halfway through the Gold cycle, plenty of margin. Yeah, so this is it. Like, yeah, it it is fishy. I've mentioned it already. You need to find first a good map, and then like half of the good maps you're going to throw out because you don't get the right portion proc. But it's quite satisfying when you do get those big hits. Right when you go to get the big pull, everything lines up. You just clean up the screen. So yeah, I, mean, I don't know. People play this game for different reasons, people like different things, but this is a build that really appeals to me, and I'm happy to, to have gotten a um, rank 1 clear as well, like a, a fair bit into the season, on a minor leaderboard of course, but on a wizard leaderboard at least. So so yeah, I think I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you play it and how it goes and good luck with the <laughs> with the fishing and pressing all the buttons on time. It's it's quite a quite a learning curve to figure out how to do it. So you can like you can practice a bit in town first if you want, or just like play every rift while you're just learning to press the buttons. But once you get into it and you, you can um, uh, you can pay a bit more attention to the actual screen, you don't have to stare at the buff bar and look at all the cooldowns, you get a bit more feel for it after a while and then, then you can get this, this really big really big bursts. So yeah, well I just thought I wanted to, to share, I hope at least someone <laughs> can benefit from it. Good luck with that.